Hello. I want to make a video today talking about some of the best new nature writing because I love reading about the natural world, especially since I live in the city. I mean, London has a lot of great parks, but I feel like I don't often get to fully immerse myself in the natural world, certainly not in the way I did when I was growing up. I, I grew up in a very rural environment, uh, literally next to a field of horses. But the best way to visit nature without actually going into it uh, is to read about it. And recently, the James Cropper Wainwright Prize announced the shortlist for this year's award. And this is a book prize that celebrates uh, the best new nature writing, as well as books uh, which warn against threats to the environment uh, across the globe. Uh, so there was a celebration recently uh, around the, the shortlists at Foyle's Bookstore in, in London that I went to with Bob the Booker. Um, it was a really fun event to learn about um, some of these new books and the prize uh, kindly sent me the shortlist for this year's award. So I'm going to talk through these different books and why I'm so interested in reading them. And there are two uh, categories. Well, actually, there's three categories for the, the award. There's a new category this year for the best new uh, children's writing about nature and conservation. Um, I'm not going to talk about the books listed for that because uh, I don't have any children and I don't read um, children's books because I'm an adult. <laughs> but I'll put a link to the, the prize website below um, if you want to find out about some of these books, um, which sound really good um, and are really important, I think, to, to raise awareness about the natural world to, to children. And these books sound like they, they engage them um, with uh, to discuss these things about threats to the natural environment in a way um, which is, you know, not scary. I mean, I think it can get very scary talking about these things. But yeah, they just um, sound really good. But I'm going to talk about the other two categories. So first is um, the category for the best nature writing. And these are the six books for it. And I actually just finished reading one of these books. Um, so I, I'm going to discuss that, that first. I just finished reading it this morning, which is called Other Lands uh, by Thomas Halliday. And this is such a fascinating fascinating account because this works kind of like a nature documentary in a way. And like I, I really love watching lots of different nature documentaries. Um, but a lot of uh, these documentaries will focus on specific animals and, and uh, talk all about their lives. But what he does is look at different eras throughout the world and takes you on a guided journey through um, these different eras of time, um, going back millions of years. So starting in relatively recent times and then going way back to some of the, the beginning of life forms on the planet. And the thing about looking at uh, creatures and the environment from these different eras is that there was a whole ecology um, around them. And so to really understand particular creatures and plants and uh, the, the natural world at these times, you have to understand the way that the physical world differed in those times and the way that, that weather um, was different during that time. And so there was an entirely different set of conditions um, which things were um, trying to live and survive under and also interactions between all these um, different plants and animals, which um, allowed them to uh, to live and, and survive, um, but also how there were periods when uh, great swaths of the living population in the world um, went extinct um, because of particular conditions. And um, how he walks you through that journey is um, so beautiful and, and lovely. Um, he gives this really great sense of how the world like physically felt different during that time and and the many curious different things that have existed on this planet and which don't exist anymore. And then he goes on to discuss uh, how our world is, is under you know threat because of the climate crisis and how we can partially work to avoid this by understanding how things have gone extinct in the past. I think it's so fascinating how he, he shows at the beginning of each chapter when he goes into a different era, showing how the physical landscape um, differed in the world during that time. Um, but then also we'll give a picture of some of the, the very strange creatures that, that used to exist before 
for. And I have seen some criticism of this book that there should be more illustrations in it. And yes, I would love it if there was. But also, I think it it would be it would make a fantastic nature documentary. I mean, you'd have to use lots of animation to try to recreate how the world used to be. Um, but the way in which he methodically uses um, different scientific studies um, to get at the truth of what the world used to to look like is is so compelling in reading this book that I felt like it just came alive in my imagination. Another book that's kind of similarly themed but um, much more specific in the area that it's looking at is Shadowlands by Matthew Green. And in this, uh, he examines and uh, discusses the history of various villages, uh, towns, and cities in Britain uh, over history and how these particular places have vanished over time. Um, some of them um, because of plague, um, others to do with um, deterioration of, of the natural environment. And he physically goes to visits a number of these places and you sort of see how um, they've been taken over by, by nature and are just sort of like crumbling now, but how these used to be places um, that were thriving with, with life and uh, human population, but how have um, since vanished. Time on the Rock by Anna Fleming. And this is a memoir about how the author learned the, the ancient art of rock climbing and various locations that she's gone to uh, around the, the UK to practice this. But uh, in doing so, she developed a newfound appreciation for the natural world uh, around her. So it's following that journey. The Instant by Amy Liptrot. And this takes a different look at the natural world because it recounts um, it's a memoir about how the, the author moved um, from a relatively rural environment to Berlin and um, how she changed her life and reformed her life in that city, but also developed this connection with um, urban, the urban natural environment and, and uh, creatures that live in the city. Goshawk Summer by James Aldred. And this is an account of the author's time uh, going to the New Forest in England uh, to film goshawks. But he did this in early 2020. And so he um, spent a lot of time there and was filming um, during when lockdown occurred and the intensity of, of that period and um, how he was trying to track and film um, these goshawks during that, that period of time. And um, this author is a well-known photographer and filmmaker who's collaborated with David Attenborough on a number of different um, nature documentaries, like the one I ones I talked about, um, loving uh, watching. And uh, so yeah, this sounds like a fascinating account. And I also, I have a special like interest in birds of prey. And recently there was a country fair um, in my local park and they had a birds of prey exhibit um, in which they had a goshawk doing a, a demonstration. It's just such a beautiful bird. So um, I'm really excited to read more um, about an account of these birds. And finally, for the nature writing section of the prize, there is On Gallows Down by Nicola Chester. And this is an account of how the, the author grew up in a very rural area of England um, and how she loved the natural world, um, but also realized that in order to uh, preserve it, um, she needed to fight uh, to conserve it. So how she got involved um, with protesting um, to save um, some ancient trees, but also got involved with rewilding in an area um, uh, where she lives. And um, so following uh, that journey and how she personally became involved with trying to pres preserve the environment. Then there are seven books which are shortlisted for the conservation part of the award. Uh, so first off, there is Silent Earth by Dave Goulson. And uh, this looks at uh, the sharp decline in insect population in the, the world. In some areas, it's estimated that 90% of the insects in that area have been disappearing. Um, so he looks at the facts surrounding that, uh, but then uh, also an account of how these insects and why these insects are important to our world and our environment, and then um, looks at positive steps we can take to try to conserve um, the insect population. And next, there's another book, um, which is also looking at insects and the, de the decline of um, insects, um, which is the insect 
Crisis uh, by Oliver Millman. And this looks at uh, more particular insects and, and the ways in which um, these insects are so vital for our environment and for our food. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's looking at that, um, but also the, the facts surrounding uh, the decline in insect populations. Wild Fell by Lee Schofields, uh, which has this beautiful cover. And uh, the author is an ecologist. And uh, this is an account of his time trying to rewild an area of the, the Lake District and some of the, the local and the political um, issues and, and uh, struggles that he encountered while trying to do this and some of the physical struggles of, of trying to do this, um, but how ultimately it was extremely rewarding. Regenesis by George Monbiot, and this book looks at how one of the greatest threats to our natural world is um, from over farming uh, that forests are being leveled and uh, fields are being overgrazed and overused. Uh, so it's it's looking at scientific developments um, which mean that we can still be fed and that the world population can still be fed but in a much more sustainable way. Somewhat related to that subject is the book Eating to Extinction by Dan Salandino and in this he looks at different foods from around the world which are growing increasingly rare. So he gives histories of these different items and why they're disappearing, but also emphasizing the importance of genetic biodiversity and how we can't only just farm a limited number of items. Our Biggest Experiment by Alice Bell, and this is looking at the history of the climate crisis when from way back when it was first detected, um, which is much earlier than you probably suspect, uh, but then up until recent times and how it's important to understand the, the history of this and how people have been reacting to it over time to understand how we can really engage with it. And this might sound like a very like depressing read, but I've heard it's a really great and engaging account, um, which is also really fascinating. And finally, there is The Tree Line by Ben Rollins, which is looking at the Arctic forest, um, an area of the environment we don't often think about all that often because we don't really ever see it, but how the Arctic tree line is so important to uh, the, the natural world and how it's being affected by the climate crisis in a way that we, we don't really realize because we don't really see it all that often. So it sounds like a very uh, important subject to, to think about. So those are all of the, the books um, up for this year's award. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books, uh, if you liked them, or if you're interested in reading them now or following this year's prize. The, the winner will be announced on September 7th um, in each of these different categories. So that'll be fun to watch out for. And I'm hoping to read a number of the different books before the, the winner is announced. But obviously, you can read these books anytime, and I'm sure they would still be very good. So uh, thank you for watching. Um, also let me know if you have any other good, great, uh, or great <laughs> nature book recommendations that you've come across recently. Um, so I, I read a number of books which are nominated for last year's award, which I really loved, um, especially Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. Uh, such a fascinating and fun look at the wild world of fungi. Um, so that's another book um, that I'd really recommend um, and love that was up for last year's award. But, uh, but yeah, I uh, hope you're reading good things and getting out into nature um, sometimes if you can. Um, but if not, I'm um, reading some good books about nature. But I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.